Oh, I didn't bring my tea. Hold on, go back. <laughs> we do. Anyways. <laughs> anyway, here we are. All right, so today uh, we're looking at the Kindle Scribe, and it's been out for a year actually. So, Olivia, I just want to tell you something really quickly about this, but this is a world exclusive 300 pixel per inch screen, and the contract actually expires. Is today the first? No, tomorrow's the first. So it expires tomorrow. Okay. So we're actually going to see this screen come out on a lot of new devices soon okay. because Amazon has had like a proprietary patent or deal like with uh, the manufacturer for it. So today that opens up, or tomorrow Ooh. that opens up actually. Oh my um, god, okay. Things get crazy. But anyways, today we have Olivia. She is uh, one of my, my friends and she has been using the Kindle for about half a year now, uh, the Kindle Scribe. And um, so yeah, do you want to give a quick intro of yourself? Cool, yeah. Um, thanks for having me on, Vlad. I guess I'll say I use this every day. I read on it. I also predominantly take notes for work on it mm -hmm. um, using the notebook feature. My background is in uh, video production, which I wasn't really using it very much in that situation, yeah. um, but I'm using it a lot now. I'm doing freelance marketing. So I'm on calls with a lot of different clients and just like keeping track of different to-dos and like checklists. Mm -hmm. Um, and being able to use it all in this one place, particularly because a lot of my different clients use different support softwares. Like some of them are on Google, some of them are on Microsoft. Yeah. So this is nice for me to just have all everything that I want in one place. Yeah. Um, so that's been really useful. So actually that, that leads me into a question. Um, if you were still working on like video production, hobbies over here, we have, we have, a, a, dog. We have a pet dog over here. <laughs> I brought the dog. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to use it for um, video production now, mm -hmm. do you think you would find it useful? In in what s sense or like how would you use it? Oh, here he is. <laughs> A cameo. Uh, <laughs> hop, off, buddy. Would I use it for video production? I'm trying to think about... Yeah, I could see myself using it a lot for checklists, for shoots, for sets, for like things that I need to get done. I think... I was also, whether this is like scalable or not, the answer is it's not. I yeah. was in my head a lot, keeping track of things like that, who I needed to email, what I needed to bring. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I definitely would be using this more for that. Did you use a lot of like PDFs and stuff or was it more I, like, were you guys using like Google Docs? I was using like, Google Docs predominantly. Yeah. I was in Google Docs and Google Drive mostly. And the fact that you can translate this over, which I don't do very much of this now, it's a feature I should take advantage of more like uh what writing to writing your notes here and then yeah. popping it over to the computer yeah. i think i would have ended up doing that a lot mm -hmm. especially because there was when i'm when i was interviewing people when i was doing production i'm on my phone scrolling through my notes yeah. and one of the things that i ended up having to tell people a lot at the outset of an interview was like Hey, I'm not like on the internet. I'm not like scrolling through Instagram. Like yeah. just so you know, I'm paying attention to you. I'm just like following some of my right, own right. notes. And I think you have to give that disclaimer when you're on your phone because it's sort of distracting. Mm -hmm. But if I had been on this, I think it would have been a lot more obvious that I was like not doing what I had to give the disclaimer for. Like it okay. would have obviously looked like I was doing something for work or yeah. like doing something associated with the interview and watching people write things down, like with a pen too. You can tell they're taking notes. They're not like texting. Yeah. Or even if you were in, on like an iPad, right? People yeah. would be like, was you like playing a game over there? Right. Or like like what's 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 she doing on? on there? Yeah. Where I think that this probably would have translated better than being on my phone. Okay. So that's, I definitely would have used it. Yeah. I just didn't have the crossover. Like do you, you, so you use it a lot to take notes at work? Yeah. I I take I, the notebook feature is probably what I use the most. I categorize things in like different um, folders, folders for different clients. Then, you have notebooks within folders and whatnot. Exactly. And then I have like running, like I use like check mark, like running to do lists. Yeah. And I like manage through this and I use it. Oh, you have good handwriting. A lot. Thank you. <laughs> I also, you'll see, I switched over. That was my different pen. Tip, yeah. And then I switched over to this one. Which pen do you use most in the... So right now I'm in a, let me look what it is and I'll tell you exactly what it's called. I think it's called the, uh, the fountain pen tip phase the fountain pen. Yeah. at the moment. Um, yeah. So that, that's one thing they, they, um, I think they've added some features to that. Cause when it came out, it was like really, really basic. Oh no. I um, love all of the different ones. Yeah. Like I, I think the other thing that I use this for too, which is funny is, um, 
I switched over and I've, st- I've started taking my like personal notes, like therapy, like, <laughs> like journaling, like kind journaling of. kind of notes. Yeah. And I end up like, this is silly, but like some of the like affirmations that I'm like writing myself, I like play with like what like I like to look at and, and I play with the different pen tips and the different fonts because it's fun. It's like an yeah. art project sort of. Yeah, yeah. So like this yeah, is I've actually, um, all the different fonts. When I did my review of the Remarkable, I actually said that I didn't like sketching on it and that was because the eraser feature I don't find great and I'm like, when I draw a lot of the times I'll like de-shade with like kneadable erasers and stuff yeah. and I can't do that with this. Yeah. Um, but I've actually started drawing more on it because with your folders you can do like the first page you can reference it oh. always as the image of the the first page. Oh. So then I can have like, instead of like having to read all the things when I go through, I can just be like, oh, boom, like these are AI tools that I'm gonna. Okay, so see. that's a feature that I don't think this has. Um, yeah, I don't think it does. That I wish it did. I honestly, I'll be honest. I don't take notes on this because I take it on the remarkable. I use this kind of more like For reading, reading, and uh, and specifically, I only really read with this at the house. I don't really even take it outside because yeah. when, I, when I go somewhere, I like the portability yeah, of this. Yeah, because this is you know? for that. Um, which actually brings me to a point here. So this is the Kobo. Um, I just wanted to show you a feature on here that I think would be cool if Amazon implemented. So really quickly, when you're like reading books. Yeah, let me jump to my library. Do you, I assume you like use the backlight a lot? I do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, do you set it on auto brightness? Yeah. You know, I think mine's on auto right now. One thing that I'll say is that depending on the time, yeah, it's on auto, depending on the time of year for me, like during the summer, I'm out in the sun, like on the porch, mm-hmm. reading during the day if I have time. In the winter, I'm not really. I'm mostly just reading before bed. Right. So I don't so end up you... messing with my brightness very much because yeah. I'm kind of reading at a consistent time. And you keep time. it. You keep and it I, like warmer. At I night. keep it on auto, and then it, it warms increase, up at night. It warms up at night. Yeah. yeah. One thing I do really like about the Kindle app is the. I don't know if you remember old Kindles, but they were like really kind of slow. Yeah. They the were the slow. resizing is so quick and so fast on this. If you like pinch and zoom, you know? Okay. I got to be straight with you. I you didn't, didn't know, know that. Did. that. <laughs> it's all good. Oh my God. But you see, how, you see how quick it is? Yeah. Like you can quickly go from like four to 10 and then it'll immediately just like resize. Oh, see, that's great. I yeah. had no idea it had a pinch feature. Yeah. And so what I was going to show you on my Kobo, this is a different brand, but I actually don't know if the Amazon e-readers do it. Um, but like, you know, I can go into the brightness here. Mm-hmm. Oops, sorry. I missed it. I can go into the brightness and then I can just like increase it here. I can do the warmth and whatnot, but they actually also have a feature where if I, Oh, um, you up and down. Yeah. I can control yeah, it yeah. right here. See how it goes. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Then you don't have to like go, you know, here you have to, to drop down in the menu and yeah, then it's kinda cumbersome. you kind of do that, which is, it's not bad. Right. But it's like, I, I was testing it yesterday because I just wanted to see, but it doesn't. I would it use do that. it a lot. More. So now that you told me about the pinch and the, not that I change it that much when I'm reading, I kind of set it yeah. to what I like, but I'll use that feature a lot more because it's, that's more accessible than pulling down mm-hmm. from the top. And if I, if it had that for the warmth, I would probably use the warmth a lot more. Yeah. Cause like one, one side could be like brightness and then one side could be like warmth or something. Yeah. Right? And then you could easily change it. Yeah. Cause but I'm scrolling to be in fair, the, the, the auto brightness is relatively good I think it's pretty good yeah it's pretty good I also Um, remember I had a Kindle before they had the paper white and then I remember getting the paper white yeah the uh did you have the one with the keyboard on it no I did not have the one with the keyboard on it um (laughs) but I actually I I, uh bought that for my mom and like I think that was like 2007 or 2008 like it was like one of the first ones that came out it wasn't the first Kindle but it was like the second one that came out and then I think I think that was when they started supporting ads did you do you remember oh, that oh yeah they made it cheaper if you had it with ads yeah and then if you didn't have ads it was more expensive i forgot about like that. that i forgot um, about that yeah and that actually uh it's funny the this is actually the first like big kindle since i think it was called the kindle dx i'll show you, a, I'll show you I don't, yeah i don't i i'll say size wise like i think that's probably like a whole other tangent that we can go on too yeah. but I knew I was going to be taking notes on this for work. Yeah, so the size, this, the iPad size was much more pretty attractive. old, but back in the day they made this like big Kindle. Oh my God, with the keyboard. It was like pretty large <laughs> with the keyboard and stuff. <laughs> and they used to have 3G in it. So you could download books without Wi-Fi. 
So that's very cool. Yeah. But all, were you them, adding that onto your cell phone used, subscription no, service? No, all of them used to have it built in as the product. Really? So Amazon was supporting it. Probably because they just didn't. It got too expensive for them. Yeah, to it probably got expensive once they started selling a bunch. And then they were able to probably subsidize it. Like, obviously, I'm sure you know, but like Amazon probably loses money on the hardware of these. Like on Black Friday, they were selling them for like 240 Yeah, I messed or, uh, up. Sorry, yeah, Black Friday. I and wish I had bought Cyber Monday. <laughs> I don't think they had good, good deals on Cyber Monday. Did you buy yours on Prime Day? No, I bought no. mine straight up. So regular like 3, regular 50, person, yeah, for something, I think. Yeah. And with the leather case and the whole yeah. nine. Can, yeah. I, can I see your case, actually? Oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't have one for mine because I just keep it at home. Um. I need it. I I throw it in and out of my backpack, and I put it in the same compartment as my laptop. Yeah. And I. It would I mean, be yeah. So from this one, disaster. I take everywhere, and like I have a, a folio for yeah. it because. But this one, I I keep it at home, so I'm like I don't really need a, a folio. One thing anymore. I will say about this case too is yeah. I was sort of expecting it. I don't know if we're all just like Apple and indoctrinated. Does this have a um, stand? No. Like feature? No, not really. Okay. And I was sort of expecting it too because of the trifold. Can I try it on yeah, because. I've tried that on planes because it's nice to be able to put it down when I'm reading and like put it on the yeah. thing. And it it does it doesn't oh, really. Oh, so it gives you like like lean. It gives you, but it it like goes. It doesn't. It doesn't really. It hold. doesn't really hold. Oh really? Damn. It's not great. I see what you're saying. It has to be like the perfect angle. Yeah, it kind of slides a little bit. And it slides a little bit, and then it doesn't hold. So I wish that was a little better. The yeah, they could definitely. I feel like they could improve this. There's, but I um, like there's another the holder we'll, too. We'll talk about this more in a second because I do want to tell you more about a different product line. Um, but Books makes this new one called the Note Air 3C where the folio can, it does some like crazy origami stuff where you can have it like that. But then it also has a feature where you can have it upright like that. See, that's what I want. It's like, I don't really, because I'm holding it like, if I'm holding it, I'm holding it. Like yeah. I'm like holding it like this to read yeah. and it's kind of a lot. It's not small to read it's on. It's big, yeah. So if I have that on its only You're support up. setting, we'll back. Um, thank you. Here we lost this guy off the mic. Yeah. This is basically a medium for them to push their Kindle store. Books. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, in that sense, that's, that's why I bought it is to read books mm -hmm. on it basically. Um, now when you read books, do you take like a lot of notes in them or do you just kind of read casually? I don't do note taking in margins or anything like that. I do highlight. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I use, which like you talking about the old Kindle that had the 3G in it sort of piqued my interest yeah. is I look up words a lot. So, so if, if you're not, if on, you're not wifi, on Wi-Fi, you're not going to like tether your phone to your Kindle to then no. just look it up because no. then you could just look it on your like phone. Like this right book there. that I'm reading right now is set in France okay. and there are phrases that come up that are in French okay. and I want to know what they, what they say. say. What they like mean, yeah. I want the context of it yeah. and unless I'm on Wi-Fi, I can't. Mm -hmm. So I've had that experience with this book where this phrase keeps coming up. And that's, I, actually a, that's actually a good point. So like, yes, the 3G would obviously be useful because then you could live look it up, but there's no reason that they, once they start... Like, I think mine's 32 gigabytes. Do you remember if you got the 64 or 32? I don't know. I probably got 32. Honestly, 64 is probably overkill. Yeah. Because you're not storing a lot of stuff on this. Like, books don't take, take up a lot of space. Room. They're like... I think I got 32. That's my megabytes guess. Megabytes or something, right? Like, tops. I think the note-taking feature... Like, I like the little kind of sticky note it pops up type thing. When you want to go, like... Oh, yeah. ...document something, it brings up its separate, like, notepad... Yeah. ...within the context of it. Yeah, the place your note exactly where you want it. Yeah, yeah exactly, like this. Yeah. I do. I so like, like that. Remarkable doesn't have that. Um, like if I were, I mean, to be fair, Remarkable is not for reading books at all. Like they don't have a bookstore. They don't have access to the Kindle store. They don't have access to like the Kobo store, like none of that. So this is specifically for like note taking, right? Yeah. <clears throat> if I was I in do college, like that feature. Whereas like if I'm reading a PDF, I would actually like to have that option of having a little pop-up box where I could like take notes on yeah. the PDF. Right now, I can just like kind of like mark it up and do stuff on it, you know. If I was in college, I would have used this a lot, the note within reading okay. feature significantly. Because like if I was in a science class or something, and I yeah. was because what I'm normally like would be taking notes in the margin, right there, yeah. I would really like annotating like this. Right, right, right. Casual reading. And also just for organization, right? Like having post its and sticky notes everywhere, and like. Yeah, and then they are not sticking in your actual book anymore, and then they yeah, fall and out. Yeah, they fall out, you lose it, like, it's just a mess, right? Yeah. No, the... Just for organization, it's great. Yeah. All right, now here's a question for you. Do you, since you've had this, do you, like, barely use pen and paper now? 
Or pencil and paper? I couldn't even tell you where the last time you a notepad it. is. Yeah. I have. I have, yes. I do not use pen and paper at all. Okay, so the other thing that I was using this for that I was having fun with in the notebook section was I was trying to redesign where the furniture is in the like office space yep. in my apartment and I was doing Oh, very cool. Use the, uh, the, ta- the Yeah, I was the, using the, the graph paper pattern. and then like I made myself that like one square equals six inches. Yeah. So then I was like designing where I would put the furniture in the room. And then you scaled it, right? And then I scaled it. So I was like, that was really fun. That's fun, Because yeah. I tried to do that on my computer. <laughs> I was like in looking up just like easy architectural programs and none of them were really that easy. I wanted to draw, like I wanted to draw it. Like I okay. wanted to be able to like mess with it with my hands. Yeah, yeah. I'm not an architect on it. Yeah, that's very cool. So I was having a lot of fun with that and I like thought that was like a nice little feature on here too. I'll show you my uh, remarkable the other day like because I'm working on a remarkable three wish list video. Okay. Um, I was working in the the grid pattern too here and uh, this is one of my complaints is when you have a lot of layers it's slow um, Ooh, but cool. so I was, I was working Sketchy. on I was thinking like this thing's metal now yeah. and it's it's really slim but like the old remarkable one was plastic and uh, I was thinking carbon fiber would be really cool. Cool. Because now that they have, a, they have a separate attachment for the folio that has a keyboard in it. And when you put the keyboard one on it, it ends up being like a pretty dense package overall. It's like kind of a lot. So I think they need to remove weight from the Remarkable. Yeah, this is heavy. Yeah. Not so that, this, was, is, not that like this is light, but th- this is... I, it's dense, yeah. Yeah. It's dense, yeah. Because this is... Um, you can tell it's like a kind of... I don't know if it's aluminum or some metal, but it it does feel a little lighter, yeah. Okay. Although when you when you remove from the folio, it's hard to tell which one's heavier. We'll have to weigh it later. My right arm's my stronger arm, <laughs> but I think that, I still think that that one's heavier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm right-handed, very extremely right-hand dominant. Yeah. Um, okay. This is I'm I'm just came up with this so the chance of this being a terrible idea are high but because i was thinking about with the graph paper what if there were like just notch markings along the side even mm-hmm. if it's not like like obviously denoted as like a ruler yeah. but it would kind of be nice to know like even if you were like if you had a notch like the notch in the base of the screen here and oh, there sure. was For one like, like every actual... inch and every half inch so yeah. there was actual because that would make drawing <clears throat> on this and like sketching even better because absolutely, it's just mentally absolutely. I agree. So I have an app on my, um, I mean, any Windows computer has it built in, or you can just download it on the, uh, the Windows store, but it's called Whiteboard. And okay. uh, it's really cool because it has live sync. So like, let's say I was on a laptop and you're on a laptop and we're both in Whiteboard. Whatever I do shows up on yours right away. But they also have like a ruler function, kind of like you're talking about, where I can put the ruler anywhere and then when I like line something on the edge of the ruler, it like auto straightens okay. it along the ruler. And then I can That's know amazing. exactly like the length that I'm doing it or like how, uh, you know, if I'm yeah. doing multiple colors, I can like just shift the ruler a little bit, do another one, yeah. move it, That's do another awesome. one, like, and it just lines up perfectly. Because if they, I mean, I guess like you're saying, like Amazon's not making a lot of money on the hardware of this. So realistically, are they going to invest a lot back into features that aren't reading related? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe not, probably That's not. True. But if they wanted to make this more sketching friendly, well, yeah, they, that would be a sick feature. I think, I mean, one of my top requests on here is to have a drawing app. Yeah. And I think eventually they will, but right now they don't. Yeah. One other company, uh, they actually just sent me a message today, but they're sending me um, one of their tablets and it's called Supernote. It's okay. like a, and they just announced last week that for this new Supernote that they're sending me, they're going to have a drawing app. See... I wonder, like, I don't really know, I don't know the economics of, like, this market as well as you probably do, but... So, this is crazy, but I'll show you, I sent my dad this uh, text yesterday. So, E-Ink is the company, E-Ink Holdings. Look at their stock price since 2020. Oh, baby. They're having a good time. 10 x you should have invested, Vlad. I did some, (laughs) but not enough. (laughs) Not enough. I mean, I should have known that was, like, when I put out my review for that... It was like almost a year and a half, two years ago. 
should have bought more. I think I did. It wasn't. Um, but so it's clearly a big emerging market. Yeah. Right. So like people see a place for this stuff. Because something that I window into my for you page is I watch a lot of calligraphy. Mm -hmm. I just find it relaxing. Like yeah. I like watching people do stuff like whatever. I like calligraphy. Yeah. And uh, they're mostly using iPads because I don't know what software that they're using. Um, yeah, because the there I think there's a software in the iPad that has just really good like strokes. And really whatnot. good strokes. So, so you people can, are using that. You can that. try. There's a calligraphy pen here. Okay, I you would can love try to that try that when you do it. Yeah. It, but like if Kindle wanted this is so, for me this Kindle Scribe is so close to being everything that I would want it to be. Particularly, I like that it doesn't have apps on it like an iPad. Yeah. Like, I don't need it to be an internet star for me. The thing I wanted to look up on the internet is, like, a French phrase. Yeah. Fine. But if they wanted this to, like, really be that all-in-one... Would all you like to see more pens? I'd like to see more pens. Yeah. Or ha and have something, like, whatever the appeal to that drawing app is on the iPad. Well, so... Because I think people would use so all So, just three. to clarify, you'd like to see more pen tools, but also more, if more I, pens. I would buy them. Yeah. Would I use them? So this super I'm note, not 100% sure, but I would buy them. This super note company I'm talking about, they actually, like, they have the standard pen, and then they um, they partnered with Lamy, L-A-M-Y. I don't okay. know if you know, they're like a pen manufacturer. I don't know. It's I a sort German of pen manufacturer. That. They partner with them, but then they make their own line of, like, specific high-grade pens that are called heart of metal pens. Cool. Um, I haven't tried it yet because it hasn't come yet, but um, the guy I talked to, Kit, Shout out to Kit. Um, he uh, showed me, and like they have ceramic nibs. So you Ooh. know these you have to replace. Yeah, they wear out. They do wear out, right? Actually, mine's doing something really weird right now. You want to see? I don't know what happened. I changed the pen tip yesterday, and it didn't resolve it. But look at yeah, this. Yeah, look at you with the passcode on your Jesus. candle scribe. I can't even get it right. Can yeah. you go to a blank notebook? Because I don't want to ruin your, your good That's notebook okay. right now. Here. I'm just flip the pages. Oh, so maybe it's something with the screen that went wrong. Anyway, so the, yeah, they have like the heart of metal pens. One thing I really do like about this that the Remarkable doesn't have is what you were talking about is the button. The so you can use the highlighter or you can actually in the software, you can set it to whatever you want. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So if you go uh, settings. It's so funny, these touch screens. Yeah, they're not what you're used to, right? So pen settings, and then the shortcut button. Oh, cool. You can set it to uh, be any of those. Oh. Um, oh, I like that. So sticky note, that would be the So one highlighter you, is just the default. And sticky note would probably really be what you want it to be if you're somebody who annotates a ton in your, while you're reading. Yeah. Yeah, That's a exactly. nice feature. I didn't or know that. Or if you're someone that likes to just switch, switch between. between pen tools. Um, so yeah, that's that's a nice feature. I honestly even think they could have like two buttons, you know? Wait a sec. So it says you can press and hold the button to use your chosen shortcut tool. Oh, you would have to still be pre You would still... So like if we chose marker, you wouldn't just click it and it would change you over to marker. No. You'd have to be holding down. Hold. You can try it out if you want. Yeah, should we try it? Yeah. So maybe, yeah, just change it to okay, marker, it for to example. Mar to marker. And then we're going to go back. So here's my regular fountain pen. And if I'm going to click it once. See what that does. Nothing. Still. Press and hold marker. Then marker. And then now let go and go back. Uh, yeah. So it just, it's a, it's so a quick. So it's a press and, yeah, it's a quick change. Honestly, that's kind of nice, though. But for highlight, for you, it's the same, right? For highlight, yeah, it's, it's press and hold yeah, to yeah, highlight. Yeah. Cool. So that that's nice. also something I think in the software they could maybe improve. Like if you have a button right here, right? Yeah. Why not have differences between tap it once and then it cycles through something versus holding Hold. and then it just, you know. Yeah, or because like, I would definitely set multiple. Well, it's the same way like if you think well, about your AirPods or something too yeah. and you like tap once, well, tap like twice. Double tap, triple tap. I would use yeah. that feature for yeah. sure. I also um, think there's room for a second button like you were saying. Yeah. But certainly, yeah, certainly a lot of options, I think, for the pen. I do, yeah, uh, I don't know. Just I don't in know if they care. The uh, kind of usability. But I don't know if they care. But it's a good pen, but like you were talking, I think you, you mentioned earlier, like you wish it had more grip. I do. I You've let me hold that remarkable pen before, 
and I think it is it significantly better that it has a texture to it. Yeah, I, I like the texture on that. I've never had complaints about like slipping. I just I'm not a fan of the ergonomics of these pens. Yeah, they're like, not. I great. think that if if, if um, I'll maybe insert like B-roll, but like if I show you the heart of metal pens, they're like thick, like they look like big like ballpoint pens, like type like just like nice construction, nice ergonomics, like all that stuff. So I wonder too. Like I know I keep leaning into like the money side of this, but I mean, from a marketing standpoint. If they're not, if like Amazon's not going to make a ton of money from their the hardware of actually physically selling this Kindle Scribe, yeah. If they had a lot of different pen options, mm -hmm. I really like people go crazy about pens. People oh, yeah. are very specific about pen weight. I can like show. I have, size, a, I have a pen. Ergonomics. I have a pen collection from when I was young. I could show you. And that. it makes a difference. Like I have this like wonderful vintage set of like gold pens that were my grandmother's, and they're amazing. But like one of them is skinny, and it hurts my hand to write with it, and. Mm -hmm. it, I like resent it because it hurts my hand to write with it yeah. and I want to because it's like this like sentimental yeah. item for me. Especially when you're writing a lot, care. right? Like like I've found points where I've written so much on that with my Remarkable that like I'm like gripping it weird because it's so thin that like my hand starts cramping. So I know? do, I just did it. I just noticed I did it. If I'm writing correctly, I'm writing like they taught you how to write yeah. in school. I'm holding it like this and then like I have a lot more control over my handwriting. When I'm tired because of what you're saying, because this isn't that ergonomic, yeah. I end up like this, which is like this weird grip because I rest it in the, the nook of my thumb and my hand there mm -hmm. because I'm tired of holding on to it. Gotcha. And then I get like sloppy. It's my own yeah. notebook, so I guess whatever, but the ergonomics would be nice to yeah. be better. Agreed. The thing is they can charge, like they already charge I think 50 bucks more for that one. And it, so the if they had like, they could have one that's like 50 bucks even more on top of that. That's like just like a premium, nice yeah. design. If, if they um, had a really cool pen with a lot of different like features and options and stylistically, like if it looked nice, like I, I you'd buy it. would, I'm a sucker for that. Like yeah. I would buy it. I'd spend a hundred bucks on that if I had yeah. one that I liked. Yeah. It's what I'm using while I'm interacting with this. So. Yeah. And it's like, you don't buy pens or paper anymore, right? So no. Like it's one tool. It's one tool. Um, so here's another thing. So I know for the Remarkable, one of the guys I've talked to, Brandon, he bought this metallic nib mm. for the uh, Remarkable pen, replaced it, and found that it did like pretty much no screen damage. Yeah, it didn't It's not supported anything. by Remarkable. They obviously don't make one of those. But like you can buy them in them for like 15, 20 bucks. And he bought it. I think there's also one for the Scribe. Would I would try that. Would you consider that? Yeah. I would it, try that. it apparently changes. So, like, right now these have more of a feel of pencil and paper. Like, if you hear that, yeah, like scratch. Yeah, the scratch. Um, this likewise, right? And I'm on, I'm on the pencil tool right now. Which is kind of nice. Which is nice, but I think the metallic one makes it feel more like a ballpoint pen. So I would prefer that. I think also particularly because I like this the best when I put a fresh nib on it. Mm -hmm. It bothers me when it starts to wear in. Yeah. I'll put uh, links to those tips if you guys are interested below. Yeah, that'd be cool. I would buy that yeah. for sure. It's like, well, of course, I would rather it didn't wear out. But I guess it depends on what you're using it for. If they upped the sketching features, then it might be nice to have something that... Yeah, and I mean, uh, like, this is Amazon's first foray into the note-taking experience on a Kindle. Like, obviously, they're, they've they had the Kindle for 15, almost 20 years now, I feel like, because it was... Probably like 2005, 2006, 2007 ish. Okay, that's um, crazy. So, like, they are obviously well versed in the e ink space. And, like, do you find any, like, issues with the e ink, like, lag? Obviously, you know, there's, like, the refresh issue. Um, no. But I think, uh, just to finish my point there, like, I think they're gonna, they're committed to keeping the software, like, up to date. Yeah. And they've added things. Like, you were actually talking about um, internet connectivity and stuff and browsing. Did you know that there's a browser in here? No. Yeah. <laughs> it's very Kindle. Kind of, you gotta kind tell of, us these things. It's kind of rudimentary, but I think they added it recently. Oh, yeah. It's, it might be in like the extra features or something. More. Yeah, go to more. Oh my god. Jeez. <clears throat> yeah, so it's just kind of silently it's just added you there. That I really just do what I'm doing on it, and then. Eh, Actually, I was trying it yesterday, and I went to like, I looked up some Kindle stuff, Kindle Scribe stuff, and it took me to, like, um, this guy's YouTube video, but they didn't play the YouTube video. Oh, I was like, you can watch a YouTube yeah. video? No, no, you can't, you can't. <laughs> okay, so you're so limited anyway that... Yeah, it's more if you just wanted to, like, read an article, maybe you wanted to, like, 
screenshot it and then like edit it or annotate on it or like do you know if you can see because i don't read embarrassing i really don't read that much news News. on i like take i i don't read as much news i take in news content in like video format i don't take in as much reading it yeah but if i liked to do that i know you can put newspapers on here like that's and I wonder, too, if you could download, like, if you like reading The Atlantic or something. Do you, I wonder if you could make, like, save it from oh, the like web, browser from web browser and be able to, like, click in and be able to read your stuff from there. Um, I think you might be able to. I'll have to look into that more because that's not a feature I use on it either. Because um, I, w- I probably would. Yeah. Like, because I'd rather read, if I'm, if I'm reading something, I can pull, I'm using The Atlantic, whatever. If I, w- I would rather read The Atlantic on this than I would on my phone. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. So, that do, would be do nice. you use Audible at all on it? I so I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I don't listen through this. I yeah, don't yeah. mess with Audible. You just on use this. your phone. I just use my phone. Yeah. I'm also usually in the car. Yep. When I'm listening to you're an audio, you're not gonna like I'm not. try to hook up your Kindle to the car, I'm right? Not. I'm definitely um, not. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like I think it's nice that it has that integration, um, but it's not nearly as necessary. And I think actually the old Kindle. I remember the one I gave my mom. It had a 3.5 millimeter jack, so you could put in headphones, um, and oh, then yeah, I re- I it would that. dictate the book to you. Mm-hmm. So it would like if you had a whatever was on the page, it would just like read out to you. I remember be- there being a headphone jack in the old one. I'll and it was also obviously say- that was back then when it was like pretty rudimentary, right? So like the audio, the text to audio conversion was a little janky. It sounded a little robotic. A little but robotic. If you know, it's better now. I'm very appreciative of the USB C charger. Yeah. Yeah, that is I, nice. Especially with the new, because I rotate between the So what do, you think, what do you think of the placement of it? Remarkable is actually on the bottom. I think that's more intuitive. That's where I would look for a charger. This is on the side. I know um, Books does this too. So do you think it's because of this though? Because if you, this is the, mo- the case that they sell. It. it would kind of cover, cover it. it. Yes and no. I think it's also because a lot of people tend to hold their books like this. So then it's this cable that's not in your way. In your way of your handheld. You know? Whereas this is uh, less of a reading device. Mm-hmm. And so when people are using it, it's normally on a table. True. Or if it's on my lap, that doesn't really get in my way. You know? You know, also I'll say the battery life on this thing lasts so long yeah. that I'm very rarely using it. And I, I don't know if I've ever used it and charged it at the same time. Because okay. it lasts so Yeah, long. and like... 15 minutes of charge will get you like whatever session you need to get through. This is at 60% and it was at 60% when we opened it today. Yeah. It's going to be at 60% for like hours. It's incredible. So so. yeah. What, what's your experience like for the battery life? Like do you charge it every week, every two weeks or less? And I use it every day. Okay. I probably, I don't think it's even died on me once yet. I probably charge it like once a month. Okay. Maybe every three weeks. It's good. Now, there are companies. So, actually, this is kind of interesting. So, if you look at the screens on these two. Okay, because this is the proprietary screen thing that we're talking about. We started with. But also the tech, right? So, the backlight. And they're um, the company I was telling about, Supernote, that's sending me a tablet. They actually just released a statement where they are not going to put a backlight in theirs, even though, like, they would have the technology. Because do you see... Do you see how the Kindle screen looks more lifted? Yes. That is it because... It looks deep set, yeah. It, the, you see, and you see the remarkable screen? If I can actually work this thing. Um, it looks like it's almost like on the, yes. the top layer. Yes. You see like... Because they, they also it's a very they put subtle, a shading. They put a shadow in. Well, no, they don't. Right? I don't think they put that shadow in. I think that's just from probably from our lighting right here that it creates a small shadow. What? And it's, it's because of that little gap there. But so that is because it has a front light. Okay. So these aren't backlights like your traditional LCD screen yeah. or your TV. They're front lights because this technology is like, it's pretty reflective, right? Like when you put it to the sun, mm-hmm. it's even brighter, right? Because it's kind of reflective. So Supernote came out and said, that like they literally released the whole statement saying why they're not putting a, a front light in it. Because they want to be dedicated to the writing experience. Okay. Whereas Amazon, if they didn't have a backlight in this or a front light, uh, I don't think they would sell very well. Because of the reading experience. Because of the reading experience, right? Funny how the, it's the little things like that that keep So it is, that is like one of the differences. And I think Remarkable 3 
Whereas like one of my wish list items was actually a front light. I don't think now that they would release it because it it might actually compromise the writing experience a little bit. I well where, after this I would love to where play like with your remarkable do you see when bit. do you see when you write it's like it literally feels like your pen is like writing as it's hitting. Mm -hmm. Whereas this it does the same but there's a little gap there, right? Like it looks like it's floating above it. Yes, it does. Also, did you know that, that these worked interchangeably? Yeah, I, I had that in my hand and saw that it worked, and I was excited about that. Yeah, because they, they both use um, Wacom EMR technology. That's kind of cool. It's a company. Yeah. yeah. So actually, this is crazy. Look, my phone has a it's a, a S twenty three. I can write. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> May, okay, so maybe that's it too. Like maybe it's the maybe it's a niche market for a, a e pen person to jump into is selling all of the different variations of this and it's not even Amazon yeah. doing it. Well, so there are different companies that sell, you can buy literally any Wacom pen and use them with these, but then those might not give you the functions of like the eraser. Oh, um, I need the eraser. They might not have a button on them. Yeah. Um, so these, while I don't think they're the best like shape and design, I think they still are the best overall user experience because yeah. you get all the features with it. I would like them to refine the eraser. Yeah. I need the eraser. I use it a lot. And it is a bulky, odd experience. And the refresh rate is kind of weird with it. Yeah, it does It does feel very kind of plasticky too, right? Yeah, it doesn't you'll feel see, very good when you use it. You'll see when you try the Remarkable. I think this one, they did a better implementation of the eraser. But with e-ink, I still don't think erasers are great. Because it like, you know, you, you move it. This one's actually better with the clearing. Okay, like there. Yeah. See, I would like to be able to go like this too. Like, if I want to get rid of a whole thing, yeah. Like erase everything that I just like, put inside that. Circle. Yeah. So uh, the company Books does this cool thing, right? Where if uh, let's say I wrote calligraphy pen there, and then I just like crossed it out or scratched it off, it would just immediately erase that whole thing. I don't know if I like that. You don't. No, I like I. I think they did it because their base pen doesn't come with an eraser. An eraser. Riser, so it gives people that option. If I could turn that on and off, I would be fine with that. But sometimes I'm like, I like what that looks like. Yeah, you yeah. know, like sometimes it's like an element of what I'm doing. It's yeah. like scribble, yeah, yeah. like scribbling something out that I can still read it and be like, oh, you were thinking that, but like, right. don't think about it. Anymore. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you, if you, you, you yeah. want to see it, you can see it, but don't think about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I feel you. Oh, yeah. For reading and PDFs, I do like that they have the landscape option. Have you, do you ever use that or do you, because I, I think I haven't uh, used it recently, but there's actually like a feature where if you put it in landscape, you can have like, kind of like a book, you can have like oh, two, two, pages. two sides. Yeah. That's kind of nice. Um, which is kind of cool. Um, let's see. Oh, Maybe something else I want to talk about is this permanently delete situation. If you delete something off of this Kindle scribe. It is gone forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Okay, yeah. So yeah, let's talk about like maybe cloud sync and stuff.